Okay, well it's time to start work on this camera I suppose. Now what I normally do, as you probably know, is uh, I'm servicing cameras for other people. I don't focus on dealing with a fault. I strip the camera down completely and build it back up and I'll deal with any problems as they arise. I think this time we'll try a different approach and I'll treat this as um, a selection of faults and I'll work on the faults and show you how the faults would be corrected and once all that's out the way I'll strip the camera down in my normal fashion and deal with all the other stuff that weren't showing as problems when the camera arrived. So, what did we decide with faults with this camera? The viewfinder. The viewfinder is very hazy. It's like looking through a cloud, so there's definitely a problem with the viewfinder. The shutter. The shutter had uh, the slow speeds in particular a bit particularly useless. The faster speed seemed to go okay. And then I thought the shutter release. The shutter release is out of adjustment. And what that meant was that when you press the shutter part way down, that's released the film advance and you could wind on to another shot. What that means in practice for a user is you might be lining up some action shot you press your fingers slowly down on the shutter release. You might change your mind because either the subject's moved into an unflattering pose and you let your finger back off the shutter release, put the camera back down, pick it up, and normal, normally you check to see if the shutter's cocked by swinging the film advance lever. And of course the film advance lever will swing. But what that means is that it was a blank frame of film there that never got exposed. So you'll end up with blank shots on your film. You might wonder how that arose. It's from problems like that. So what's happening here is that as you press on the shutter release, the first thing that's happening here, that click, was releasing the film advance. If I'd pressed a little bit further, you'll get the click for the film advance. That one. And if I press a bit long further, the shutter fires. Those two actions should ideally happen at very much the same point. What happens if the shutter release is adjusted the other way? So that the first action releases the shutter but doesn't unlock the film advance. That is very frustrating. That's more of a nuisance. It's much better to have a blank frame of film on your blank frame on the film that you don't know why than it is to have a situation where you cock the shutter, you take your photo squeezing gently on the shutter release until the shutter fires, release your finger and the film advance hasn't freed up. So how do you free that up? Well normally you would press the film release button and then you'd be able to wind on. But that's an extra action you don't want to have to take. So it's important that this action is adjusted so as far as possible the shutter releases and the film advance is released to allow you to wind on at exactly the same point in the travel of the shutter release button. So that's one little problem that needs to be dealt with. The shut well we've dealt with it, the shutter we know is the slow speeds are no good. And the other thing of course was that the hinge pin here is missing and that's a, a minor nuisance but it be, can become a major nuisance because this is not acting evenly on the front standard it means that the front standard could be going in slightly at an angle it'll tend to jam if it tends to jam next thing you know these little arms here will bend and if the arms bend, well then you never get the thing to, to fold up smoothly. So, since that's a simple problem to fix, I think I'll start by replacing that missing hinge pin. So here I have a hinge pin. Well, it's easy for me because I've got boxes of screws 
from retinas that have been dismantled for parts and uh, loose screws that came to me from uh, previous repairers when I've bought, bought up lots as people have retired. So with the screw present, we can put that thing in here. Now, as I said, there's a hole in the leatherette there where the screw worked its way out. Because there's a hole there, we can make use of that hole. I find the right screwdriver. First I'll see if I can line that hinge up. There seems to be good. Okay, so that should be good now, and it is. It opens and closes very smoothly. That's a good result. The fact that there's a tiny hole in the leatherette there, that'll probably not even be noticeable. You can fix that up with a little bit of black wax if you like, or you can cut a patch, and I, I normally would cut a little triangular piece out of there and insert a, another piece of matching leatherette and uh, it'll be as good as gold. So, that was the first problem. That was easy. If only all the camera repairs were that easy. I think we can move on to dealing with the shutter release problem there, the fact that that's not synchronized particularly well. First thing I'm checking here is to make sure that the shutter's not just loose in the body of the camera, because if that's shifted, and it can shift to a certain extent if it's not tight, then that would affect the timing because the shutter release acts on the shutter at this point. So we need to get into the top of the camera. This camera, this is a Retina 3 small C. It's the second type or the last type of the Retina small 3 small C camera. It has a single range meter. Now to open this up, requires a bit more thought than opening up an earlier 3C and I'll show you. We'll put this one aside bring in this one. This is a, uh, a cutaway model I made some years ago so you can see to a certain extent how all the actions work inside the camera. Not the shutter, I didn't make a cutaway shutter that would have to be crazy. Anyway, let's start with this. If I wanted to take the top off this particular camera, first of all I'm going to take the film out of this. As you can see it's got a few light leaks. All right, out with that. To deal with this, the first type of 3C, or the more common type of 3C, first thing you need to do is remove the rewind knob. I normally just put the tail of my tweezers through the shaft and just unscrew the knob with your my fingers because you don't need a tool to take that off. That's the collar that sits underneath the Rewind knob. On this model of Retina, we've got two screws at the top cover here. Underneath where the rewind knob is. Be careful with your screwdrivers. Use good screwdrivers, ones that aren't all buggered up because you don't want them to slip. If they slip, you'll end up scarring something. So we have one screw at the end of the top cover here.
On this style of 3C, the earlier ones with the metal flap over the meter, and if the metal flap's been snapped off, as it's not uncommon to find, you'll notice it has a metal frame around the selenium cell, or around the window for the selenium cell. This type, the knob is fixed to the top of the camera. It's not fixed to the meter, so it lifts off with the top of the camera. And you can lift it off carefully. There's the meter still on the camera. With this type, like with the three big C cameras, the knob has to be taken off before you take the top off the camera. So, apart from that, same deal here. To spin off the rewind knob. This screw here on the top of the meter, we need to deal with that. As soon as we remove this, there'll be no friction holding the dial at the bottom in its position, so you'll lose the setting of the meter. So normally I just make a note of where things are. And what I'm looking for is this little tick mark here next to the 1300 ASA in this point. And I'm looking to see, with this dial rotated fully clockwise, I'm looking to see where that tick mark comes up against. And it's about midway between the 17 and the 18 mark. Now I know where to put that back in place so that the meter setting stays exactly the same as it was before I started. I need to unscrew this tiny little screw here, this pinhead screw. So what I'm using here is a screwdriver I've made and this screwdriver was made by taking a Dremel to a cheap screwdriver and grinding it away till it was just left with two little points the right distance to suit the holes in the top of the camera. So undo that screw and put these pieces aside. So we've got the screw. Got a little wavy washer. This piece. Got a plane washer, small plane washer. That is sometimes not present. Then we have our film speed scale. Then we have a wavy washer. Then we have the dial. To take the top off the camera, this part at least is the same as it was with the other camera. Two screws here. One at the end of the top plate. That one's just dropped down into the strap plug. That's better. Get them out of there. Okay, on this type of camera and on the three big C cameras, do not just rip the top off at this stage. If you do, you'll probably cause problems. Hold your finger on the center of the meter. Then lift the top off. Just give it a bit of a wiggle. Lift it away. Looking here on this camera, there's a screw. Holds the meter in position at this place. Often that tab is broken off. If you just rip the top off the camera, with or without the dials off the top of the camera, chances are the meter will just lift straight off, snapping that little tab off, and then things will not be fixed as firmly as they should have been later. However, we're not disturbing the meter at this stage. That can stay exactly where it is. 
No, I re will remove it because it makes it easier to see what I'm doing. So I have a single screw at this end. I can see that that plastic piece is already broken. Instead of uh, being a closed loop, it's just like the letter C. So I'm holding my finger on the shutter release while I lift the meter away. Why am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that because I don't want to lift the shutter release out of the camera. If you lift the shutter release out of the camera, chances are you'll end up with grief. The first thing that's likely to happen is that if there's a return spring underneath here, and I'll have a quick look and see if there is one. Yes, there is. On that shaft, if you lift this out, that spring will probably just blip away. It wouldn't be bad if it fell on the table, but it's not going to fall on the table. That would be too easy. What it does is it drops down into the gap between the folding, the shroud here and the bellows, and the folding front section. And what it does in there is it hides away in a corner, might do nothing at all for you, but then you might discover that you can't close the front of the camera easily. Or worse still, you can't get it to lock up into position because the spring has found its way in between two surfaces where it doesn't belong and it jams things up. So it's important, don't let the shutter release fall out of the camera. What do I normally do to keep it from falling into the camera at this stage? I put a rubber band around it between here and the, the strap lug at the other end of the camera typically. And I'll show you how that works. Right, I'll take the button off the top, not taking the whole shaft out of the camera. Put a rubber band around there and just loop it around there to give me a bit of tension. And that just stops it from falling out. I can take this off. This is our film release button. We can remove that in its return spring. Right, so what have we got here? At this point, I'll zoom you in a bit because you can see bugger all. This screw here with its return spring, that's screwed into the film release shaft. What's happening in this camera, as you depress the shutter release here, the tab on the top of this bears on that film release shaft and releases the film release, uh, film advance. I'll just drop that down. It's cock this. You can see that just bears on it. And that was the film advance releasing. And as it presses down further, we get to the shutter release part. So to adjust this, all I need to do is adjust the length of the screw sticking up effectively. I'll zoom back out a little bit. So I'm going to screw that in slightly. I'll give that half a turn and I'll check the action again. To cock the shutter on this camera, I'll show you how that works. With yet still releasing the film advance too early. In order to cock the shutter when the top's off the camera, I have to hold my finger down on this lever here, that shaft. That's the lock. That's the lock that locks the film advance when you reach number one. It's held down by the frame counter and the top cover. Of course, the top cover's not there, so I've got to hold that down with my finger. Cock the shutter. I'm going to give this another half a turn. And try the action again. Just very gently. The shutter released there, but my film advance did not release. Or did it? Well, perhaps it did. Perhaps I had it right the first time. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
by um, stroke of luck I've got that timed just right so it releases or unlocks the film advance at the same point it releases the shutter so if that was your only problem at this stage we can reverse the process and back out backing out of the situation we've got ourselves into let's take the film release button put that back on its shaft put our meter back in place put its screw there put that back in place excuse me I don't have transparent fingers Check that everything's seated. That bears good. Carefully lift the rubber band off here. It shouldn't be able to get away now because the tab on the shutter release is held underneath that meter. But don't uh, don't take any chances. Okay. So everything's just sitting there. Put the top cover back on. And while I've got it on there, I'll hold that down with my fingers and I'll just check the film advance. Check the shutter release. No, that released the film advance before it got to the shutter. Yeah, it's still doing it, so back out. Let's do some more adjustments. Because the loop is broken here on that meter, it means I don't need to unscrew it all the way. I can see here that this is a bit melted looking. Most likely someone's had a go at gluing that in the past. Failing that, someone's put solvent in here, which is not an uncommon thing for people to do. Right, let's just put that, tighten that screw up. We'll do it a quarter of a turn this time. Holding that in place, let's check again. That's the film advance being released first. So it still needs. Now that's that's sticking. That shutter release is sticking there. It probably means there's a little bit of distortion in that top cover. Yes, it's it's moving around on the. The chassis a bit. Just check that. Hold my finger on the top of the meter each time before lifting the top cover. I need to check find out why the shutter release seems a bit stiff can't see anything obvious there Yeah, it's certainly sticking. Let me put 
with screws in that top cover, which will stabilize it. It probably means there's some distortion in the top cover. Um, that can be very annoying and troublesome. You end up with situa problems exactly like this where the shutter release won't move smoothly. And not uncommonly, you undo the screws, look at everything in the camera, can't identify any problem, put the top back on and the problem has completely gone away. And it just means that something had shifted. Just a little bit of pressure on the body can sometimes do that. Yeah, it's shutter. Oh, let's get that frame counter off, number one. That will help. I can tell it's stiff because the shutter release hasn't popped back up into position yet. Yeah, so the shutter release is stiff. It could just be rubbing on the back of that meter. Or it could be that the shutter release shaft is slightly bent. But the timing there felt quite good. Just lifting the meter out to inspect that. You can see a, a dirty patch here. That's where that shutter release actually bites and is bit into the plastic at that point. Again it looks like solvent damage. I suspect that someone's applied a little bit of solvent there perhaps. And what's happened here is it's created a rough spot in the plastic of this meter housing and that's where that shutter release runs down against. And I think that that is just catching on there and causing us grief. The pattern there looks more like solvent damage than it does like uh, some unusual wear pattern, I think. Yeah, let's try and get that to catch the light for you. Yeah, this piece in here, the plastic's a bit rough. The shutter release doesn't normally sit particularly well without the meter in place, but we'll try this. I just want to see if that shutter release will work smoothly. And I have to say it's not. This is all dangerous because that shutter release, that shaft could just pop out at any moment. Right. If this is bent, if that shutter release shaft is bent, which is a possibility, um, it'll be completely different if I turn it the other way. So I've rotated that 180 degrees. Oh, hang on. I just got that out of it. That was down the side of the shutter release. That's a little piece of black plastic. That little piece of black plastic will be a piece off here off the meter. And that is probably helping to jam things up. Let's put that back where it was. What I'm doing is I'm rotating this one way or the other and I'm looking at the way it sits in the hole in the casting. And of course, if it's completely straight, it should look the so I should see the same space either either way. 
and I'm not, it's bent. This needs to come back. This was the way it was as before. And that's round the other way. So there's certainly a bend in that shutter release. That leads to other possibilities. Instantly that's nice and smooth in its action. That swung 180 degrees out from where it was. You've got to be very careful when you lift the top cover off like that that you don't pull the shutter release straight out. Alright, let's get this meter back in here. Let's get the film release button back in here. And see if we get a win. This was supposed to be an easy problem. Well, look at that. That's it. That was what was required. Well, while we're winning, let's put the screws back in the top cover. Okay, that was easy. Check it again. That's good. I can still tell that releases the film advance just slightly early, but the point is so close that you wouldn't pick it. And it's preferable that it releases the film advance rather than the other way. Okay, so that's good. We'd put the rewind back on. Just the reverse of what we did before. Put something through the fork to stop it turning and check that it's a good smooth two stage action. You know you've got everything right. Now, putting the meter dial back on. Right, so we know that we were right round at clockwise completely. And number 18 was towards the front and on that we had our wavy washer the film speed scale and in this case our pointer was between the 17 and the 18 that pointer there next to the 1300 on the ASA scale we had a plane washer we had this piece We had a wavy washer and we had the screw. I'll just spin that down. Be careful applying a screwdriver to that screw. It's chromed brass. It's very easy to mar it and uh, it'll be ugly forever after that. No one else will notice but you will. Tighten that screw up a bit. Okay, so we've got that back where we started. And if we're only going into the camera to deal with our shutter release timing problem, well, now we've dealt with that. That's all you'd need to do.